Hello, hello, my love. Welcome back to the Arouse Podcast for another episode. I'm your host, Sam, and we are still in the breakup series. Today's episode, I dive into a lot of tea with my ex and current friend, Cameron Hinchcliffe. And some of the things that we touched on today are some firsts, some toxic traits that both of us did in our relationship, and how we're able to be friends now, years after we were in a relationship and broken up. So let's get into all the tea. Warning, the following presentation is intended for mature audiences. It includes stigma topics like sex, addictions, mental illness, adult dialogue, and strong language. Viewer discretion is advised. Fuck, where do we even begin? Because we dated, was it June or was it July 15th of 2014 to like January of 2015, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's about right. Was it June 15th? I think it was June, yeah. Okay, because it's literally June 15th today, which I oh looked at and God. I was like, date sounds so familiar. Why? And then I was like, oh, I'm pretty sure that's when we started dating. <laughs> so this is so aligned with the universe right now and very ironic because we did not, I wasn't even aware we were going to record today. We met off of POF, right? I don't think we met off Tinder. No, plenty of fish, yep. Right. And... Oh my God. I remember thinking you were such like a dork, like slash nerd. Don't you remember that? And you were like, I had a skull. I had a sports scholarship and you were like, so proud of that. And I was like, well, I'm sorry. I didn't know. No, I actually don't remember that. But fucking like, yeah, like I think I'm an athlete. Like I'm not a, I am a nerd, but I'm not. (laughs) That's just funny. Yeah. So we dated for six months and in the six months I went to your house Every single time you had never even came to my apartment. Not once. Gone inside the apartment. Yes. I did pick up your truck once or twice to do an oil change or something. But yes. From the parking lot Mm -hmm. in the complex. Yes. But you had never been in my apartment. Correct. Yes. I remember having such an issue with that. I remember you were so selfish because you wouldn't ever come over to my house. Yep. No, I agree. I was selfish. And even though you had like five or six other guys living in the same house as you and you wouldn't ask one of them to watch Jem for you for the night just to sleep over at my apartment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's probably a defense mechanism more than anything. I like to sleep in my own place, but you are correct. Yeah, it was that at least my last ex, my ex-girlfriend, I could bring Jem and so I could go sleep with the dog there and just leave Howie. Yeah, because my apartment didn't allow pets at all. So like you couldn't bring your dog there. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. No, but still, still me being a shitty boyfriend. I have, definitely don't disagree with that. We started dating uh, like in 2014 and it's 21 right now. It so. was when you were 18. Yeah, it was yeah I was 18 because I wasn't 19 yet. And you yeah, like, snuck me into ro- you had Robbie buy me beer when I'm when my friend died. Yeah, I did that. I cleaned your room and I got one of your roommates to buy you beer because I wasn't 19 yet. Yeah. And they left it in your room and I left you a cute little note because you were gone for the funeral. Yeah, yep. I, that was, that was such a toxic trait that I had. Like I went above and beyond like for anyone that I dated and like, I would compensate for how I was being treated in return. Like you were nice to me, but there were times where like, I just felt like I was putting in so much more effort and I was like, oh, if I put in so much more effort, you know, he's going to want to do the same thing. And that was a huge toxic trait that I had. I was like, oh, I'm going to comp- like overcompensate and I'm going to do all these things and be the best girlfriend ever. And then he's going to want to treat me better. And it never happened. Not just yep. with you, but with other people that I dated as well. No, no, it's a freaking circle. It's cyclical it just it just happens like the men specifically men get complacent in relationships and they just think that like oh i'll just be the same guy do nothing different she knows i think she's beautiful she knows i love her don't need to tell her men are very very bad with that i see that a lot in relationships marriages when men just kind of fall off a cliff and they just don't try anymore because they have their wife or their girlfriend or whatever they want to call them and they're like oh well, i don't have to win them over anymore so i can just you know lay back and enjoy being taken yeah no it's it's, it's very common like that but yeah men men get complacent a lot more easily than women do in relationships which shouldn't happen but it does no and then i remember so we started dating june 15th and it was july 1st that i met your dad and your stepmom which was pretty much two weeks after we started dating yeah okay yeah canada day 
Yeah. So July 1st. Yeah. I remember being so nervous for that because Hmm. as the girlfriend, like you want to show up as this like good girl and that you're like worthy for the parents kid that you're dating and all this shit. But like, how did you feel like introducing your dad to your current girlfriend, like in general? Oh, well, I I was pretty open about it. It didn't really bug me because I knew my my dad would, my, my dad's easy. And your mom? My mom is not. My mom is a very intimidating woman, and I am terrified to bring girls to meet my mother. I remember that was the first thing you ever told me about your mom is that she's a very intimidating, intimidating woman. Mm -hmm. And that scared me. I was like, I never want to meet his mom because he pretty much implied that she's not going to like me and there's nothing I can do to make her like me. And it put like so much pressure on me Yeah, that I was like, I'm never meeting your mom. And I never did meet your mom actually in our relationship. Yeah, well, my mom is a very hard person to deal with. And mostly it was me not wanting to be judged by my mother by not bringing people to meet her. But yeah, she's she's a lot. Which is ironic because now you've told me on multiple occasions that she's pretty much like, why aren't you dating her? Why aren't you dating Sam? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It was just all shit I made up in my goddamn head. And that's where it stayed. <laughs> So like putting on this own pressure for yourself, not living up to your mom's expectations. Mm, Yeah, pretty much. That's pretty much exactly what it was. Because my mom is very judgmental. And if I did not live up to her judgments, issues would happen. Still do. It's always hard meeting the mom of anyone that you're dating because you feel like you're going to be judged for everything that you are. And you almost like don't want to show up as the authentic version of you in fear of being judged, ridiculed, and also rejected. Oh, exactly. It's hundred percent a thing. And it, I was just always terrified that someone would meet my mom and they'd immediately think I'm a piece of shit. Why do you think that? Oh, just because the way my mom, my mom comes off very, very stern and um, cold, which is wrong because my mom is a very warm person, but she comes off very cold to new people. And it, it just always like gave me an issue, like worrying about how my mom would look at things and how she'd perceive stuff because my mom is a very cold woman. She, she is. She's very cold. And and, um, actually, she wouldn't disagree with what I'm saying right now either. Okay, well, I don't have an opinion because I've never met your mom. So I don't actually know what she's like. Yeah, no, definitely. Like, it's it's just my mom is a very cold person. (laughs) And compared to, like, my dad, like, I'm much more emotionally in tune like my father. But my my mom is a very cold person. (laughs) So I remember having a couple of firsts with you. In the sense that I got my first tattoo with Thank your you. support. I'm not going to say 100% because of you, but because you had your two family crests on your forearms and you were planning on getting other tattoos, it it showed me that like it was acceptable and it was okay to get a tattoo. With growing up with my parents, they were like, oh, like you don't get tattoos. My parents are like completely like skin virgins and oh, they my still don't still approve of- for them. Even though it's her family crest and it's for her husband, <laughs> she still just judges the shit out of me. But anyway. Oh, still to this day, my parents don't approve of my tattoos and they don't agree when I get new ones or whatever. But to each their own, I got my first tattoo, the one on my clavicle or my collarbone. And I remember you introduced me to your tattoo artist. Oh, and another first was trying pot for the first time. Obviously, oh, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm no stoner. So when people are like, oh, like, do you? I'm like, oh, yeah, I've smoked pot. Or I've even said I do pot. And they're like, you're not a stoner. I'm like, of course I'm not. Like, I don't even know the proper terms. I still like, remember the time like I had the edibles and you just ate the whole fucking bag and it just ruined you. Yeah, well, you probably shouldn't have given me like no, a version of it because I'm such a snacker. Thing. I just didn't think you were going to eat that much of it. The next thing I know, there's like, it's like half gone. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. So there was that. And I remember waking up later in the night 
even after I had this very spicy pizza, which I didn't think I was going. It was to not eat. very spicy. You just can't handle spice. You had no fucking spice index. I can't handle spicy anything. My tongue was on fire. I was like, I'm probably going to have diarrhea later because my body just doesn't like spicy food. And I remember waking up in the middle of the night and almost not making it to the garbage. And I'm just. No, you didn't make it to the garbage. I had to clean it all up off the floor. Oh, see, I obviously don't remember because I thought I... And it smelled like pizza. It was disgusting. (laughs) That's what you fed me. I know, but it it was just, oh, I hated it. I was. But anyways, I threw up and I greened out because I was... (sighs) Yeah, because you ate fucking half a bag of edibles that nobody should eat. Even a normal stuff. (laughs) <laughs> like it was my fault, but I just left you and you just ate the whole fucking bag. Yeah, you can't really like leave me unattended when I'm getting high for the first time. You need to like give me strict instructions. No, I, I agree. I should have been paying more attention, but it was like, God damn it. I was what? I think I was 19. Yeah, I was 19. 19. Yeah, and I was 19 when that happened. So first time I ever did drugs was 19 years old. <laughs> uh, yeah, so bad. <laughs> Yeah. And I still, I still do it occasionally, but I can't smoke it anymore because I green out every time and I can't do edibles because I green out every time on those two. So I do the hybrid pills now where it's some CBD and some THC. Yeah. So that's, that's working for me right now, but I don't do that very often. It's only when I have like a weekend off and I'm not at home and I just can sit at my Airbnb or my hotel or my friend's house and we can just veg and do nothing and watch like funny movies. Oh, exactly. That's probably like the best way to get high, in my opinion, in my own experience. I would agree with that. Seth. I, I really don't understand why people want to leave, whether it's walking or driving. I'm like, I don't understand. Like, just get everything and bring it to where you're staying and just get high there. Why would you leave? Because it's so unsafe. Like, I can't think straight. I feel like my brain is like swollen, like when I'm drunk, because I can't walk straight. I can't think straight. Things are blurry. And sometimes I even see things that aren't really there. And it's like, yeah, I don't ever want to leave. I just want to stay here and like sink into the couch and just laugh my ass off at a movie while eating whatever junk food. Pretty much. That's all I want to do for the most part, too. Is there anything you want to, like, add really quickly before we wrap this part up? I don't know, that you were a great girlfriend and I was a shitty boyfriend. (laughs) Okay, I wasn't, like, asking for that, but thank you. It's a fact. (laughs) I acknowledge it. I realize I was a fucking shitty boyfriend. But a big reason why we're friends now is because you've grown so much as a person and the toxic masculinity that you had when we were dating is no longer there in your personality. So I believe now that with you growing apart as we like weren't in contact, we weren't friends, we were broken up. It gave us so much time to grow as people apart. And then when we reconnected, because I remember thinking, you know what? I think it's been four years since we broke up. You know, I just want to see how he's doing. If he like completely doesn't want to talk to me, I totally respect that. But I'm actually curious how he's doing. And I'm, I'm over the breakup. It's been four years. <laughs> exactly. And then we became friends after that. Like we just kept talking and talking. And here we are today. Look at us. Yay. But all right, no, it's been nice chatting. Friggin', did you ever want me to come back? Thank you again, Cam, for coming back on the podcast to share about our past relationship and spill all the tea. I hope this episode was helpful for you to realize that you can look back on your relationship and see how much you have grown and also look back and to see what you can change in yourself, what you don't want in a new relationship and see if it might be fathomable for you and your ex to be friends because it's not for everyone. And I have found one of my exes that I'm able to be friends with now, but that's out of how many other guys that I've dated and slept with. So it's not for everyone, but thank you again for tuning in today's episode and I will see you next time. 